This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Yesterday, we reported that France was about to step up in a big way to help out its auto industry. Today, we have a number. The French government is going to spend 8 billion euros to help automakers, suppliers, and car buyers. Consumers will get 12,000 euros if they buy an electric car. And France has a goal of manufacturing 1 million BEVs in France by 2025. Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi just announced more details about where they're going with their alliance. The automakers no longer plan to merge and will instead focus on working more closely on vehicle development. They're going to adopt what they call a follow-the-leader approach for new products, where one company will lead for a particular type of vehicle and region, and the others will follow. They hope to build half of their vehicles under this approach by 2025, and they aim to cut their investment per model by 40%. The range of vehicles they build is expected to be cut by one-fifth by 2025. But they did not say where any job cuts will be coming from due to producing fewer vehicles. Hey, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, now might be the time. The EV maker cut the price of its vehicles by as much as 6% in North America. The starting price of the Model S is now $75,000. That's down from about 80 grand. The Model X now starts at 80 grand, down from $85,000. And the lowest price Model 3 is now $2,000 cheaper, with a price of about $38,000. While the price cut is nice, the company is no longer offering free charging at its supercharger network for new Model S and X buyers. Tesla also said that it's going to cut prices in China for the S and X by about 4%. Is interest in autonomous vehicles waning? Apparently not. Amazon is about to buy another AV startup. The Wall Street Journal reports that it is in advanced talks to buy Zooks, which is valued at just under $3 billion. This acquisition would add to Amazon's autonomous vehicle portfolio, and last year it invested in the self-driving startup Aurora Innovation. Mercedes unveiled the E-Class sedan in January, and now we get to see the coupe, the convertible, and the AMG versions. On top of the body styling changes, the front headlights have gone full LED, and the taillights feature a new internal design. Four new paint colors are available, as are aerodynamic wheels. With the AMG model, the grille is unique, with vertical slots and the lower front air vents have additional flaring. Have you noticed how similar all of Mercedes' new interiors are? The new E-Class follows right along with a layered dashboard, round air vents, and two big display screens that seem to blend into one. The convertible also gets an electric wind deflector and in-seat heating system that blows warm air on your neck. Unique touches on the interior of the AMG include a special design in the seat material, red stitching, the option for red seat belts, AMG badging, carbon fiber trim, and a performance steering wheel. In the U.S., the new E-Class is powered by an inline six-cylinder engine mated to a 48-volt starter generator and a nine-speed automatic. All-wheel drive is also available. The AMG has a similar setup, but the engine is boosted to 429 horsepower and all-wheel drive is standard. It will go from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Well, you just knew that BMW was going to have to respond to what Mercedes did, so here is the refreshed version of the 5 Series. One thing we can be thankful for is that the twin kidney grills haven't ballooned to gargantuan proportions, though the lower front air vents are massive. You'll notice there's no rounded element in the front headlights anymore. It's more of a hockey stick shape right now. The taillight housing didn't change over from the old model, but the internal design is new. The rear bumper is new as well as the exhaust tips, which are larger. The display screens are also bigger, 12.3 inches, which are up 
from 12.25. Under the hood, six-cylinder models will now be paired with a 48-volt starter generator. A plug-in hybrid, which combines a 2-liter engine, electric motor, and 12-kilowatt-hour battery is still offered, but a new feature that BMW calls Extra Boost adds 40 horsepower for up to 10 seconds. Pricing in the U.S. starts at just over $55,000 and ramps on up to around $78,000. Sure looks like after the coronavirus clears up, people are probably not going to use public transportation like they used to. A survey in China shows that the number of people going back to private vehicles has nearly doubled. So Kia is planning to build a small, affordable electric vehicle for urban areas, according to Auto Express. Kia is looking at something similar to the Citroen Ami, which can be purchased for about $6,600 or rented for as little as $22 a day. But Kia says the project will hinge on whether it can offer the vehicle at a similar cost to public transportation. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Sales of electric vehicles are really picking up, but they still represent a small proportion of the total market. Charging is still one of the roadblocks, but Witricity thinks that wireless charging could actually boost the adoption of EVs. Here's David Schatz, the company's VP of Business Development and Sales, explaining how. Well, what we're told by the OEMs is that um, the, the car buying public, uh, they love the electric cars that they buy, right? They're quiet, they're high performance, they're very reliable, um, they're green, and they don't cost much to operate. Um, the one aspect of electric vehicle ownership that is the, let's say, least favorable is the charging experience. They used to talk about range anxiety. Well, that's kind of going away as the battery packs get bigger and there's more charging locations available. But the charging experience is one that you have to plan for. Um, you have to be willing to, re you have to remember to do uh, uh, before you, when you park the car and then you have to make sure you unplug it before you pull out of the garage. You have to be willing to handle a, cord that might be sitting down on the ground getting dirty. And in this particular time now, that means if you're going to use a public charger, you've got to go handle this thing that's been sitting out there that who knows touched it. And, you know, and so the issue of um, health and safety, uh, we now we're taking to calling a sort of no touch wireless charging. So uh, you don't really have to grab a handle. You don't have to grab a gas pump. You just park the car and you're good to go. For more information on that wireless charging, you can watch that entire interview on our YouTube channel right now. You know, all this e-racing seems to be bringing out some of the worst of some race drivers. Kyle Larson lost his sponsors and his ride for using the N-word during a virtual NASCAR race. Bubba Wallace, another NASCAR driver, lost one of his sponsors when he quit an e-race in rage after Clint Boyer seemed to deliberately crash into him. In IndyCar, Simon Pagano deliberately crashed out F1 driver Lando Norris in an e-race because he thought Norris had taken him out. You know, maybe the programmers can figure out how to have a virtual fistfight between the drivers after incidents like this. And now, Daniel App was fired from the Audi Formula E team after he secretly invited a professional 18-year-old sim racer to take his place in a virtual Formula E race. That guy finished third. Daniel App said it was a joke and he was going to reveal everything after the race, but maybe he didn't get around to doing it fast enough. He was fired from the Audi team and fined 10,000 euros. And before we go, we wanted to share this very clever photo and caption that we saw posted on Facebook by a guy named John Lydell. The caption reads, rare photo of Mother Wrench feeding her new hatchlings. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching.